the Travel Squad podcast. We're four friends that grew up together in the same small town. We followed each other to San Diego, and now we adventure the world together. One passport stamp at a time. We're here to share our travel stories and inspire you to go on your own adventures. Even if it starts with your own backyard. I'm Jamal. Brittany. Kim. And I'm Dana. And And we're we're the the Travel Travel Squad Squad podcast. podcast. So grab your ticket, your passport, and don't forget your travel insurance. And prepare for takeoff. Ahoy, mates! Welcome to episode six of the Travel Squad podcast, Cruise Life. Cruise Life! Cruise. Yeah! Even though we've never cruised together as a squad, we all have cruised the high seas at one point or another. Cruising is so much fun. I'm a big fan of cruising, and there's a million reasons why, and we're definitely going to go into all of them. My first cruise ever was last February to Riviera Maya. I went to Cabo, Mazatlan, and Puerto Vallarta. And haven't you guys done that cruise? We have, yeah. You well, haven't done that cruise, no. Jamal. Actually, I've done that cruise with my family. <laughs> he was there in spirit. <laughs> no, when you said where you were going, like you were listing all these spots in Mexico, and I, you were talking Mexican Riviera on the West Coast, but I've been kind of Mexican East Coast and Playa de Carmen, Ooh. Cozumel, and so I just got so excited with your <laughs> what you were saying there, Kim, that like I was saying, like, yeah, I've been there. It's funny because I, I stopped at Mazatlan, <laughs> but that was the one port stop I didn't get off the boat. What other cruises have you guys been on? Well, so the last cruise that we went on was actually some locations in Mexico for us. Like I said, we did Playa de Carmen, Cozumel, but it also went to uh, Roatan, Honduras, which is an island off the coast of the mainland. Oh, very cool. As well as Belize. I want to go to Belize so bad. And and that last one was actually January of 18. So it's been a long time since I've cruised and it's been a little bit too long. That's how much I love cruising, actually. You've been on a lot of cruises, haven't you? I have been on a lot of (laughs) cruises. Total, I've been on nine cruises. Eight of them have been ocean cruises and one of them was a river cruise. So I've cruised between the islands of Hawaii, been to the Caribbean, Bahamas, Jamaica, We want an Alaskan and Canada cruise. Oh, that's so cool. Isn't Alaska where you guys got engaged? It is. Yes, it is. is. (laughs) (laughs) And then I also, Jamal and I went on a river cruise for our honeymoon, and it was on the Danube River in Europe, and it went to Hungary, Slovakia, Austria, and Germany. That's so interesting. When people think of cruising, I always think of ocean cruises. I never think of river cruises, but are they big in Europe? So river cruises are big in Europe because there's a lot of different rivers that run through, like the Rhine and the Danube, and there's a lot of destinations that you can go to. And my dad actually went on one where it was focused on wine, and it goes through... Typical Mr. David Harvick, <laughs> It was in the south of France, that one was. It was in the south of France, <laughs> and it was focused on wine, which I think you'd like, Kim. I would love that. That sounds amazing. And Zana... Tell us about your cruise experience. I know we did it kind of as a family and Kim wasn't there, but that one was your first one and you didn't know kind of what to expect when you went into it and you loved it, right? I did. I've never been on a cruise and I just always felt like, I don't know, I just didn't think it was going to be that great. And so you guys were pretty much hyping it up and I thought, okay, well, we'll see what happens. But I loved, loved, loved the cruise life and the Froyo. (laughs) (laughs) gotta love that we'll talk more about that in the food section coming up so in this episode we're going to tell you about why cruises are the perfect vacation from food and drinks onboard activities and entertainment and shore excursions cruises offer activities for everyone you know i honestly think cruises are the perfect vacation and i don't even think it's a biased opinion granted they were kind of the first bigger vacations Brittany and I started taking together so because of that they kind of have a special place in my heart but beyond that my favorite thing about a cruise honestly is the cost they're one of the most inexpensive in my view all-inclusive vacations that you could take in terms of it's your lodging it's your food and it's your transportation and wherever they go you know uh, wherever and it's your entertainment and entertainment 
Absolutely. I love the entertainment on board. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, when I was in my early 20s, I was feeling pretty lost and I was traveling around a lot. And I wish that I knew that there was an option to work on a cruise ship because how cool would it be to work on a cruise ship and travel for free and go to so many countries at such a young age? Yeah. For I free. I thought that would have been a cool trip or right? a cool, just a cool experience. Yeah. You're not spending money on food or living or anything like that. I've yeah, often, you could just save all of your money. Yeah, seriously. And I, you get tipped. I've often thought about that myself. Like, man, if I was younger, like I would love to work on one. <laughs> I think I'm a little past the age of wanting to live in such tight quarters of course. and work for six months straight. Yeah. But it would have so, been nice. <laughs> so speaking of small quarters, if you're doing it right, you should only be using your stateroom to sleep. So one of the best ways to save money is to actually get an inside stateroom because they are the cheapest. And if this is the first time you've gone on a cruise and you get an inside stateroom, you actually know no better. So why not get it? They're a little small, but the experience is outside of your room. Yeah, I got a, the last cruise I went on, we had little peepholes. I'm not sure how we swung that, but you don't need them. And my friends that were on the cruise had a balcony and they didn't even use it. And Brittany said the entertainment's outside of the room, but there is one amazing thing that happens inside of the room, and it doesn't matter what size room you get, and that is that every day when housekeeping comes to your room, they clean everything up, and they make the most adorable little towel animals. And every day (laughs) there's a different one. So there's like a frog, a swan, a monkey, And our last day was the best day because we had the monkey hanging from the pole above our window. It was so cute. And by the end of the trip, we had a a whole family of towel animals. (laughs) (laughs) Every day we took pictures of them. It was so cute. The towel animals are cute. You know, I just remember coming in one time and it was a day at sea, so we didn't go to land. And I definitely didn't have my sunglasses with me. So they took my sunglasses that they saw sitting on the vanity and they put it on the stuffed Aww. animal. So I came in and my little dinosaur had shades on its <laughs> supposed ears. I don't know if dinosaurs even have ears, but they were sitting there and it was actually pretty cool. But circling around to the tight quarters and the stateroom. So when Brittany says an interior or inside stateroom, What that means is a room that's not on the edge of the ship that doesn't have like windows or a balcony. Now, these are going to be the most cost effective rooms that you can actually get because of the fact that there is no view. But like Brittany said, realistically, the room's going to be for sleeping. You're either going to be at port somewhere or there's tons of entertainment activities on board. So we've always pretty much done an interior estate room to save costs when we go on cruises and the one time we actually did get a balcony one we barely even used it and so I don't want to say it's like a waste of money because it's nice but you really don't use it and it's a good way to save money by taking the inside stateroom. So the great thing about the cruises is you don't have to plan anything you just show up every single day they give you a daily itinerary which is really nice just in case you want to know what you're doing because there's always going to be something going on somewhere on the ship at all times. Yeah, I'd say from like 10 a.m. to probably midnight or later, there's something planned for anyone of all ages. They do. So when housekeeping comes in, they'll give you the daily itinerary for the next day. And I'll again, list all the times of the activities, shows, etc. But one thing that I, I think we should all want to touch on is there is what's called a cruise director on board, yes. which is basically kind of like your host throughout the entire cruise. And on most cruise lines, every morning, they'll kind of like come over the PA throughout the whole ship and say, (laughs) good morning, ahoy mates, or whatever it is, and tell you pretty much like, we're going to be starting off the day with this and these activities, please check your daily itinerary. And so if you don't ever read it, you could always find out what's going on by the overship PA when they kind of announce what's going on. One of my favorite things about get on the cruises is the daily itineraries. I love getting them after dinner and going through because I'm such a planner and (laughs) circling everything I want to do the next day. I did that too when I was on my last cruise. It's so so much much fun. fun. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it just gives you so much excitement of what to look forward to for the next day. That's for sure. Yeah. So cruises are ideal for both relaxation and adventure. There's so much to do on board. There's hot tubs, there's spas, 
And when you're not aboard and you're at a port, there's excursions. Yeah, when I was on my last cruise, I got like a little pedicure. And as I'm sitting in the chair getting my toes done, you're looking out of a window out into the ocean. So it's a beautiful view while you're getting pampered too. One of the cruises that Brittany and I had gone on, uh, on one of the ships, their jacuzzis, they obviously have multiple jacuzzis and pools. And, you know, I know some people listening to this may think like, oh, I don't want to be in a pool with like kids and whatnot. They do have some pools and spas sectioned off to keep kids out and it's adults 18 plus. So you can find that relaxation. But some of the hot tubs that Brittany and I went uh, into on one of our ships actually hung over the edge of the ship. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so we had a big glass kind of window and it was hanging over the edge of the ship. What really cool cruise line views. was that? That was Royal, Royal Caribbean. Caribbean. And there's another cruise, or the cruise that I went on where they had an ice bar inside of the yeah. cruise. We didn't do that. Yeah, they what had an ice, ice bar. bar? Uh, so they give you like a big parka jacket. Seriously? It's like big minus... marshmallow jacket. It's like <laughs> minus five, minus 10 degrees, granted Celsius. So we're talking obviously below freezing, maybe 20 something degrees Fahrenheit. And basically... It's completely frozen in there, and all your glasses are made out of ice. So if you want a shot, your shot glass is ice. Did they have an ice luge? Well, we didn't go in on it. All right. What the hell? Yeah. You guys didn't go in the ice bar? We did not go on it during this vacation. When Jamal and I went to Amsterdam, I don't want to hear it. You didn't go to the ice bar. (laughs) We went to the ice bar. We went to the ice bar, the original one in Amsterdam. So we didn't think the cruise one wasn't going to be good. I'm so disappointed. We we didn't go in it. But yeah, a lot of activities. You guys aren't allowed to go on any cruises without (laughs) me ever again. (laughs) All right. Well, I'm anxious for us to go on one as a squad. I'll tell you that. That's for sure. I think it's going to be so fun if we do like a Panama cruise. What's Ooh, that like Panama two, weeks? two weeks? Yeah. yeah, that would be awesome yeah. with the booze package. So one last thing I want to say about cruises before we kind of go into the details about them is that they are perfect for groups, families, couples, singles. Really, there's something for everyone on a cruise. And so my experience with cruises, you guys did a family one, but my, my one was uh, with a friend and some other friends, but it was with his whole family too. So there was, I think his grandma was celebrating her 80th birthday and then there were kids on it. And then there was us who were just partying every night. And this next cruise I'm going on, me and my mom are sharing a room. This is my mom's first ever vacation out of the country. So that's another thing about cruises that it, it's a perfect kind of starter trip to get your feet wet with leaving the country and still be like in a safe environment if you're kind of worried about that. So we're going to the Dominican Republic and uh, Turks and Caicos, and we're bringing friends, my friends along too. So it's going to be kind of an interesting mix of demographics, but there's something for everyone. So yeah. And I've kind of done the same thing. I've gone with just Jamal. I've gone with my family without Jamal when I was in junior high. And when my mom was, my mom's a single mom, and so she and her family other single Filipina friends they would all bring their kids together and it would be like four single moms all with all of their kids so there was like two to three kids per mom and we would all go on a big cruise together so it was like us and my like fake Filipino aunties you know how that is I'm picturing that in my head I can see it now yeah and so you know you could meet up with some of the other kids that are going along you can meet up with your aunties as like a big family dinner so there was a lot of different things that we were able to do and there was something for everyone there. And what I like kind of about the cruises also is obviously, you know, if you go with friends or as a family, sometimes you don't want to spend like 24 seven with each other. So in terms of, you know, like adults traveling with kids or family that you don't have a kid, but one of your brother's sisters does or something, there's always something to where you guys can kind of split up and then reconnect all together back at dinner or at shore. So they're really good to make sure everybody has something to do, um, but not always having to spend time together. And that goes to say for the food too, there's so many different food options. Everyone can make themselves happy, which is a perfect segue because let's talk about food, the food on the cruise. So the best thing I would say about food on the cruise is the daily buffet. Zaina, don't you love a good buffet? 
Especially when it's breakfast, right? Uh, I'm not a big fan of buffets. What? Just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Coming to you live from the breakfast buffet. Oh my God. When we take our squad cruise, we definitely have to do a podcast from the cruise breakfast buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Looking out to the seas. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was so good. Well, Jamal and I worked out every single day on the cruise. So um, after our workout, we'd go in our sweaty clothes to the, the breakfast buffet and just and do all the work that we did. Cause I mean, they've got waffles, they've got French toast, they've got everything. I don't even know. We're being hung over one morning. Me and Chelsea just went to the breakfast buffet and loaded up a plate and went back to our room. <laughs> and there's not just breakfast buffets. There's a breakfast buffet, a lunch buffet, dinner buffet, a late, late night, night buffet. I mean, like they just buffet are- Buffet all day. <laughs> <laughs> buffet all day. The best part about you know, again, cruises, I want to circle back around on that is all your food is included. So that's one thing that a lot of other vacations, you know, where the tally can add up and really get cost prohibitive is food that you have to spend money on. Whereas on the cruise, I mean, it's a smorgasbord, if you will, like you of all things you can eat. So fat on the cruise. Do you I know, do you actually out. know what the average weight is that you gain on a cruise? on an five average pounds, seven day cruise, <laughs> you hit it on the head with the first guess. It's like five pounds. Yeah. I felt five pounds heavier when I left that cruise. It's supposed to be one pound per day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Well, let's wow. just assume five pounds. We don't want to go seven for the most seven day cruises. That's a little, uh, but. Well, but I took the stairs all the <laughs> time. The so uh, <laughs> the, the cruise ship is really high and then it goes to a really bottom floor. So you can take the stairs instead of the elevator. I mean, we're talking up the buffet because we all love a buffet kind of like a normal everyday day life but if buffets really aren't your thing there is other options for you it's not just oh here's the buffet you're here you got to eat i mean breakfast lunch dinner some of the main dining rooms you can actually do sit in dining and Where you act- order what you want yeah you order what you want off of the menu and it's not buffet style so there are lots of options that way to do if you don't necessarily want the breakfast or lunch buffet but one of my favorite things too specifically a lot of people go to dinner for the buffet but i don't understand that one of my favorite things actually is going to be the dinner oh, service in the dining the dinner room. Service. The dinner service is one of my favorite too, and I love it so much because even though it's not a buffet, you can order what you want and you can order how much you want. Like you can order two entrees, two dinner apps whatever you you can order five desserts if you want if you want to try them all you don't know if you want the steak or the chicken just get both your waiter (laughs) is going to happily oblige when you guys got back from your cruise you took as a couple you were showing me the pictures and telling me about it and you were telling me about how you can get apps and desserts and all this and i was just like mind blown like i need to go on a cruise right now (laughs) yeah yeah i remember there was like one dessert i didn't like take a bite and then boom i'll just order a next one and that's the great thing about the cruise is because remember you're on a big ass boat so there's a lot of restaurants there's not just one there's not just two you're gonna have so many different choices we just like to talk up the buffet another thing to note is some of the drinks are free on board so you can get water you can get tea you can get lemonade you can get coffee and that's all complimentary with breakfast lunch dinner any time of the day that's all included yeah i was a soda drinker when we took that cruise that we went on and um, i did not get the soda package but yeah soda is not included on a cruise did you end up buying soda i didn't I, i was pretty good because they do have the iced tea so i think i did raspberry iced tea with um just unsweet iced tea and it held me over Hmm. You did buy your Coke Cero when we were in Mexico, though. I did. <laughs> that no. port for 50 cents. <laughs> That's because the uh, the Coke in Mexico is so much better than the Coke here in the United no, States. No, I would definitely agree. Let's be real, though. No one's drinking soda or lemonade on a cruise. <laughs> Everyone's drinking alcohol on the cruise. So it's really important to know that, obviously, as you can imagine, the alcohol is going to be expensive on a cruise. Drinks are anywhere from like 10 to $15 per drink. But on most cruises, you can get a booze package, which includes 15 drinks a day. I don't know if it's like that on every cruise or if it's unlimited. Oh, so otherwise. they capped you at 15 drinks yes. a day? Really? Yeah, it was 15. So on Brittany and I have never cruised Carnival. On the ones that we have cruised, 
they don't have a set limit of how many you can have per day, but basically what it averages to for the cost per day, you have to average so many drinks to kind of make your money. But they have different packages where you could say, oh, this is just a beer package. Uh, and again, depends on the cruise line, but just beer or beer, wine and spirits combination, it's gonna be a little bit oh, more. Wow. So again, depending on your cruise line, but all cruises will have a beverage alcoholic package for you to potentially choose from but depending on how much you drink you should do the kind of the cost average like kim said of like ten dollars a drink and really figure out okay this is how much comes a day yeah. am i going to be really drinking this much yeah, some people yes out. some no <laughs> <laughs> it comes out to uh, the ones i've been on have been about 50 bucks a day and so you know, think about it. If you're going to drink five drinks a day, that's about that. And so also you should know though, because you're in a stateroom with two people, everyone in the stateroom has to get the drink package if one person does. So me and my mom, yes. like I said, we're going on this cruise. I mentioned to her, hey, it's 300 bucks. Let me know if you want to do it. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess she talked to her friends and they said it was that the drinks were expensive. And she's like, she texted me the other day and said, yep, drinks are a go. Let's do it. <laughs> like, yep, that's my mom. <laughs> okay, so on the topic of alcohol, though, I have one last thing to say. The last cruise I went on, we did not get the drink package, and we were okay. We did still spend money on buying drinks, but <laughs> we also snuck alcohol on. And I'm not condoning any kind of unlawful behavior, but if you are trying to sneak alcohol on, the way we did it was we bought these plastic flasks off of Amazon, very cheap. They come in various sizes and we filled them with liquor. We stuffed them in our, our luggage and wrapped them up in clothes and whatnot. And they go through the x-ray machine and they don't get detected. So you're good there. And then also when we ported and put the Vallarta, we needed a refill because we'd already gone through it. <laughs> and so we took those flasks with us and we bought a bottle at the liquor store and refilled them and just kind of like stuffed them in our backpack in the same way and it works. So if you're trying to do it, I know you can do that. You can also bring like a couple bottles of wine on and that's permitted. I've heard of people also like using a shoe to get the cork out of a wine bottle and then refilling it with liquor. So just get creative if that's your route you're trying to take. Yeah, you bring up a really good point, Kim, because cruise lines do not allow you to bring your own booze on, except for what Kim said of like maximum, usually two bottles of wine. They don't let you bring on beer, hard alcohol. If you think you're going to get clever and while you're at port on a shore excursion, actually buy booze and bring it back on. No, they x-ray you uh, and your baggage, you know, every time you actually come back on the ship. So there are those ways that kind of Kim said to kind of circumnavigate that, but don't think you can bring like a lot of booze on. They make their money by having you buy it on you, the ship. You know, the best, the next best thing after the booze. What? The soft serve ice cream. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Soft serve ice cream. So I was warned about this pre-cruise and I thought, oh, okay, like whatever, you know, it's not a big deal. But at the very top of the cru the ship <laughs> that we were on is where the buffet was and they have a soft serve ice cream station. And it was the best thing. I think I've probably even started my day with it. I end my day with yeah. it. If you're it's bored. Hours. Yeah, let's go get it. We all made a mess it. of ourselves with that. <laughs> but you know what? Every once in a while, they take off the handles to clean it. And when they're off and you can't get ice cream, you're just like, what the heck, dude? Why can't I get ice cream right now? <laughs> I need my fourth ice cream of the day. <laughs> Please. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things about cruising is actually just like, oh, I've walked up all these decks of the ship and feel like I've earned myself uh, a nice ice cream from all the calories I've burned doing that. Because I mean, these ships are like 13 decks high, you know, and one of the things I do since there's so much food is instead of taking the elevator, you know, take the stairs when you can. But after I've taken a flight of stairs or been around all day, I definitely love to spoil myself with the soft serve ice cream you, from you the buffet. It. Yeah. Or he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> when you come back from um, the excursions too, you know, you're, you've had a long day you're probably hungry maybe you didn't eat while you were out and you just thought oh, i'll wait until i get onto the ship and then you just get on the ship and you just hit that ice cream bar yeah. not ice cream bar, the soft bar and one thing to know too that if there isn't food available like if the buffet is closed for cleaning and you're hungry there's room service guys room, room service, service. yes <laughs> 
I know that on some cruises there is a charge, like a small charge to use room service if it's after a certain hour. Sometimes that's midnight, sometimes that's 2 a.m. Um, so just be mindful of that. And when the people bring you your food, you should tip them. That's the nice thing to do. But room service is available all of the time. Even after dinners, most nights, what's one thing we would always do when we got back to the room, Brittany? We would order Get more food. Yeah, <laughs> we would do like <laughs> but, a cheese plate. Yeah, we, we would Delicious. we would do a cheese cracker and fruit plate. We wouldn't get like more food, food, but we would get like Midnight you know, snack. yeah. Well, I've never ordered room service. Did it cost you anything? No, no, not at all. Like Brittany said, certain times, you know, they may actually impose it. Like she said, usually maybe midnight or two a.m. But usually that cutoff window starts back at like 6 a.m. in the morning. That way you could have breakfast delivered if you don't want to go to one of the sit-down restaurants or the buffets and whatnot. Um, I mean, if you have a balcony, it's definitely nice to start your day with someone bringing your coffee and have your coffee on your balcony if you're in a balcony suite. That's one of the cool things to do, actually. One morning I can remember on the cruise where we had been up pretty late, I would say like 4 or 5 a.m., and we wanted food, and I think it did start at 6 a.m., And so we finally ordered food and we just ordered like BLT, grilled cheese, turkey sandwich, Caesar salad. (laughs) You ordered the whole room service menu, huh? We brought it all up and we just ate, went back to sleep and, you know, got up again and then went to a formal lunch. One thing that we didn't (laughs) touch on, though, is we talked about kind of the main dining room that they do have, you know, for the dinners. One thing I want to say on that, depending on your cruise line... Sometimes they actually have formal nights and non-formal nights. And I just want to make sure all our listeners are kind of aware of that. Certain days on the cruise, dinner in the main dining room will be formal. I mean, I've seen very few people come in not wearing formal attire yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, really dress it up. Dress to the night. Yeah. Wear a ball gown. If, it, if it's formal night and you don't have the attire because you don't want to pack it, like... Go to the buffet, yeah. (laughs) But they they have that, but some cruise lines, Norwegian, for example, which is the last cruise line that we went on, they do not have formal nights. It's one of the things that they don't have. So Yeah, so that's one thing to take into consideration. But beyond the main dining rooms for dinner, they do have specialty restaurants. Did any of you guys, you never tried any of the specialty restaurants on board, Kim? Oh, you're missing out. You're missing out. Zaina, you went to one of the specialty restaurants with us when we went on our family cruise. It was your sister's birthday, and we went to that Brazilian steakhouse, and that was a specialty restaurant. I heard that was a really great night. It, it was, was so good. It's kind of like a fogo de chao, is it? It's kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. So if you're familiar with that style. Um, um, yeah. yeah it was- and they carve it at your table. Remember the pineapple? The pineapple oh was the best, God. one of the best things that they had there. It was like that roasted <laughs> pineapple with like sugar and cinnamon and they would come carve it at your table. It was so good. good. Yeah, It was in- insane. It was so good. Yeah, but the specialty restaurants, they basically on all cruise ships, the specialty restaurants are extra costs if you want to eat at them now depending on the cruise line or which specific restaurant sometimes it's a flat dollar amount per person sometimes uh, they charge you per the entree now the food is kind of like more specialty so say for example you know in the main dining room if you have steak they'll give you choice steak but if you go to the specialty restaurants they'll give you prime cuts of steak and things like that so you you guys love your steak yeah Yeah. so i don't want i don't want to discredit any of the food in the main dining room because it's absolutely so delicious but in the specialty restaurants uh they definitely do have higher quality it's not as crowded as obviously in the main dining room so it just gives you a different dining experience that you can choose to have while you're on board All right, so after you've eaten five pounds of food every single day, you're going to need to burn it off. And they give you plenty of ways to do that. So at the top of the cruise, they do have pools, hot tubs, water slide. I think it was the first day that we were out at sea. They had a hairy leg or hairy chest contest. No, 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 Mr. Sexy Leg. That's Mr. what it Sexy was. Mr. Sexy Legs. It was not hairy legs. It was Mr. Sexy Legs. Um, so that was exciting to watch men with all different styles of legs compete. <sighs> and so don't let it be intimidating, right? This is for fun. This isn't like for real or for serious, right? It's about who can embarrass themselves the most 
with whatever it is that they're doing to show off yeah. the legs. So, I think we even had twins competing. Yeah, so the Mr. <laughs> Sexy Legs on that one was basically all the guys would kind of compete and they almost gave like a fake catwalk type of like model runway esque feel to it but some of them had hairy legs some of them were really <laughs> muscular and in shape some of them not in shape but it's really just how you kind of like present yourself and whatnot as like who the winner is so i mean they have little fun things like that my favorite thing on board was the hot tub i honestly didn't do too much on this cruise just chilled back relaxed maybe a drink in hand soak it in the hot tub every single day <laughs> I actually have a good story about the water slides aboard the cruise. Yeah. Why don't you regale us with the tale of you and the water slide on the cruise, Anna? So they had a water slide on the cruise, and it's two racing water slides. But it's not just like you get on the slide and you shoot down. They put you in a capsule, and then they count it down, and then they drop the floor out from underneath you. So you're not sliding. They're they're, they're fucking dropping you. <laughs> and then... That sounds frightening. It's terrifying. It's awesome. It's awesome. So and there's a loop. Yeah, and there's a loop. Um, and then the, the more you weigh, the, the easier it'll be for you to go over the loop. The less you weigh, then there's not as much weight to catapult you over that. So in case you can't make it, they do have an opening right there before you go through it so you can crawl out since you were unable to finish the the slide but Jamal did it first and you could just hear him as soon as they dropped the floor beneath him <laughs> I think we still have the video of that <laughs> yeah it was a good one right and then his voice is echoing through the entire slide so then Jamal says you and Brittany have to do it so I go up with Brittany and I'm freaking out it's really nerve-wracking being put in a capsule so Brittany goes in first so I don't have to be in the capsule for as long and as soon as I step in I was like I can't do it I can't do it I can't do it and Brittany looks at me like what the heck man and then they drop Brittany oh no Zana you're being a danger ninja again you know it. she was being the opposite of a danger ninja on this one she was being a little scaredy cat so yeah so I did the walk of shame down and I think Brittany was like come on man I could have done it with Jamal at least if you were gonna chicken out yeah I didn't want to do it alone that was like the whole thing and I was gonna do it with Zana because she was willing to do it and if she wasn't going to do it, I would have preferred to do it with Jamal. But here I am all alone going through this water slide all by myself. Zayna's doing the walk of shame down. So we actually tell her that if she doesn't do it by, by the, the end, end of the cruise, trip. she owes us all a drink. Right. So I did it on the very last day. There's no way you're going to spend all that money. Yeah, on she alcohol. didn't want to. She didn't want to spend thirty bucks <laughs> buying us drinks. So I'll swallow my pride. I'll do it. I'll do it. But wait, there was another time that Jamal did it, and Brittany and I were right there. What was this? Was it that same day, or was it when I actually did it? Because remember, you got in, and they count you off too. Three, two. One And so you know that they're going to drop the floor out from beneath you. So Jamal gets in and the girl who's manning the slides looks at Brittany and I. She was a little cutie too. And she says, <laughs> <laughs> watch this. So she lets the three, two, one go. And she doesn't hit the button to let Jamal go. Brittany and I can't see Jamal because he is standing up against the back of the slide so the attendant looks forward at jamal and she says that oh my gosh you should have seen his face he's looking at me like oh no and then she did the I countdown would, again and let you go that at all i knew after when it didn't drop the first time that she was just playing with me she did it like a second time and then obviously by the third time the joke was clearly obvious she and then so she let the it one. go yeah, I think she was flirting with me, if you want me to be completely honest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that was pretty funny. But no, beyond the floor dropout from below you water slides, I mean, they have regular water slides, too, for like kids and even non ones for kids that aren't just as dramatic with the floor dropping out below you. So one of my favorite things, I mean, especially when you have sea days and what a sea day is, it's a day fully at sea where you're not at port. What else sometimes is there to do but... It's a nice sunny day. Let's go to the top and, you know, ride some water slides. And this is definitely one of my favorite activities and things to do is definitely hit up the hot tub and the water slides on two days. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of fun games, though. We did one. It was an 18 and older game that was kind of like kind of like a scavenger hunt, but you got into groups and you had to do weird things like trade pants with someone and run up there and give them your number. <laughs> 
take two bras off and run up there with them Ooh. or like two girls had to kiss two guys had to kiss oh it was getting risque yeah, on there it whoa got really weird I've, oh, I've never seen one chelsea, like quite like that chelsea had to go up there and there was a line of women who had to get on the mic and do an orgasm like uh, the sounds of an organ. <laughs> I've seen ones like that, or where like you have to put a balloon in your crotch, and like someone has to come up and like hump you and pop. Oh yeah, the balloon there was one. Them. They were like doing like sex positions. It got really weird, especially because we're with our friends and friends' mom and stepdad, and yeah, so it was real fun. You just gotta have no shame on these cruises, apparently. Right. You know what the type of games that they. And do then there that. was another one in the nightclub. They had a twerking booty shaking contest. Oh. I missed out. <laughs> Whoa, apparently I need to go on Carnival then. Yeah. I, I've always heard Carnival's the party cruise line, and apparently, I mean, I'm missing out on twerking on competitions over here. I would love to watch those, huh? <laughs> How about competing it, Jamal? There was well, a guy, though, he, I, don't know. I thought he could have been a male stripper because he was just like flinging his legs around, like putting his legs around someone's neck and just like going Mr. crazy. Chippendales? He won the booty shaking contest. Oh, <laughs> sounds like he would. Wouldn't he had somebody. the moves. Pretty crazy. That's so funny. One of my favorite shows that they have is the Newlywed Game. You saw the Newlywed Game, Zana, did you not? I did. I you was did? there. Every single night I was there watching the game. Did they have it on the cruise that you went on to, a Newlywed? I didn't see it. Oh, but did they, do you did you remember in the itinerary if they had one? I don't think so. Ah, so one of my favorite things on all the cruise lines I've been on is the Newlywed Game that they actually have. And what it is is basically, obviously, if anyone's familiar with the TV show, but instead of everybody being Newlyweds, They'll have people audition live in front of, you know, during the show of, okay, someone who is a newlywed married within the last two years. And then, okay, we want somebody who's been married maybe five to 15 years. And then the last couple to compete is somebody who's been married to like 25 plus years. But they always choose that old couple who has been married 40, 50 years. And they always admit the most risque thing that they did is bang on their balcony deck that they've had out there. But that's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite shows to actually watch. And Brittany and I have always thought like, oh, should we, you know, compete in that one and whatnot. But I did end up auditioning for one to compete. In, which was the hundred thousand dollar pyramid? Do you remember that, Zayn and Brittany? Yeah, I remember that. You had gone up, and what did you have to do to win to be a participant? So they were doing like auditions as they do always kind of for those shows. And I think you were like on a timer and the cruise director was going through and basically trying to say like questions like, oh, name me like a fast food chain. It was going down the line and when the music stopped and if it stopped on you, that was kind of the audition process. But we played, I ended up winning, getting passed, playing $100,000 Pyramid. And if any of you guys aren't familiar with what that show basically is, it's you have a partner, and I got partnered with a stranger that I didn't know, and you have to give them clues, and they have to guess the answer, and then vice versa just as well. And we ended up winning, and I ended up getting free cruise gear and... Definitely a free bottle of champagne, which was the highlight Ooh. because, yeah, who doesn't Love want that. a free bottle of booze? So, as a matter of fact, when we went to dinner at the specialty restaurant that was like Fogo de Chao, that's where we had our champagne all as a family, if you remember oh. that. Well, you and your partner were perfect together because you gave the best clues and she knew how to guess. So, the only time that you guys actually struggled was when you were um, forced to switch roles and she had to give clues because she didn't necessarily give the best clues, but... You knew how to do it. Yeah, she I mean, how to she definitely didn't give the best, but without tooting my own horn, I mean, I picked up on that shit real quick and I was like, <laughs> yeah. And, and then at one point, I think like I knew we had won and there was a hard clue that I had to give her. And do you remember where I said, oh, oh. For, oh, forget this. We already won anyway, because it was like the topic was like dance, dance moves. moves. And you had to do the dance moves. She had to. Guess, yeah, she had to guess the dance moves. And then it was like robot. And I was getting all self-conscious and I didn't want to do the robot or whatever it was. And I was like, oh, forget this. Like, we already won. And then the cruise director was like, no, 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 no. Go, go ahead. Let's see you act this one out. <laughs> yeah, but no, 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 Jamal was right because they had gotten so many correct or she had guessed so many correct that Jamal didn't really need to do anything. They could have sat there in silence if they wanted to because they were so far ahead of everyone else. Mm -hmm. So way to be cocky about that, Jamal. Awesome. Yeah. 
yeah, him. <laughs> absolutely. That was fun. And beyond game shows, there's so much more to do. There's comedy shows. There's bingo. Who doesn't love bingo? Ooh, I love a good bingo game. <laughs> bingo yeah. we had to buy in, though. That wasn't free. That one wasn't free. That's correct. We had to buy in. And unfortunately, we didn't win any money. No, but I <laughs> love Do we bingo. ever? No. <laughs> no. You know what? We will when we stop doing the ink blots. When yeah, we let we the computer do it. it. I'll play computer bingo one of these days in a casino and we'll win. Yeah, we love bingo guys, but that's besides the point. They also have an escape room. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I like to think I'm good at clues and especially as we were just talking about, you know, how I played on $100,000 Pyramid or their version of it on the ship. Brittany was the one killing it, like in the uh, escape room challenge that they had with kind of the clues. I know she (laughs) is. It was impressive. But, you know, beyond the other activities, you guys, obviously, this wasn't any of the cruises that you were on. But Brittany and I, when we had gone on a solo one, as a matter of fact, it was our Alaska cruise. It was... The cruise line that we went on, one of their newest, and at the time it was built largest ship. I don't know if when we were on it, it was still their largest ship, but they had an ice skating rink on that. No. Oh Can you, you believe that? I, well, yeah. we went, awesome. they had a show, they had an ice skating show. And then on top of that, you actually got to skate on the rink if you wanted later. So that was like one of our activities as well was to do some ice skating. I mean, crazy stuff on there. Do you remember when we went to, we were at the buffet and you went up to two people and you let them know that I really enjoyed your guys' performance? God, What well, show was that? Did, it, it was a um, dancing show. Mm-hmm. I forgot what it was. it was. It wasn't ballroom dancing. It was like classical. Anyway, it was a dancing show that they actually had. And I recognized two of the performers. And I just told them that I, I enjoyed the show. Yeah. So there you go. If you want to see dancers, they've got dances on the <laughs> <Yeah>. cruise. <laughs> they've They're, got everything. they got everything. They have something for all ages. They do. They also have a lot of shopping. Every day they seem to have some kind of new theme. You can get watches. I know they had a watch day, then alcohol day. I have a tip on the alcohol, though, from what I learned from my last cruise. You can buy it. They're, they're supposed to give it to you when you leave the cruise, but they actually delivered it the night before. Oh, lucky you. The last night. So your last night on the cruise, you get it delivered, and you could drink it if you so wished. Kim, you would have been really disappointed <laughs> in us because I think it was the first day at sea. We had signed up for tequila tasting, was it? And then we didn't end up showing up because something else was going on. Do you remember that? Yeah, said- but didn't they charge for the tequila tasting? I well, thought they charged for the tequila yeah. tasting. And maybe in the end, we just decided we didn't want to spend the money for it because we were about to be in Mexico and let's get cheap tequila in Mexico. Okay, maybe. I don't know. But, but they've got about to be disappointed a second time. No, but, hey, believe, <laughs> believe me, Kim, when we were at port, we, we got our drink on. I mean, I went to a convenience store and there's open liquor policies in Mexico. I walked the streets just with my beer. <laughs> we don't even yeah. need to worry about that. Right. What we didn't do on the ship, we made up in Mexico. Absolutely. All right. All right. You've saved yourselves. <laughs> Another thing to know on board is that you can take your pictures. There's picture stations everywhere so on formal nights they have like classic poses that you can take sometimes they look like prom date photos paparazzi they're they're everywhere fun fact jamal and our save the date photo was actually taken by the cruise line yes it was they're quality pics and that's the picture we use for our save the date card. Now that I look at that photo, I don't know if I feel like I like that photo. I mean, Brittany looks radiant in it, but I don't know about mine. But nonetheless, yes, fun fact, we got that one from like one of our cruise photos. So, you know, when you get off at shore, they're always there to take a photo of you. In the main dining rooms, they're there to take a photo mm-hmm. of you. Sometimes they'll just be out kind of about the ship and be like, oh, we have a photo backdrop. Why don't you take a photo? I think Kim, Kim I saw one of your oh, best I... photos was one of those Which ones one right was there. it? The, the piano. piano photo. Oh, the piano. Okay, so me and my friend Chelsea were roommates on this cruise, and we find our friend Jordan in the casino, pretty drunk, sweaty <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> Difficult choice. I can see him. But you know what? He had his shirt on. No, it was <laughs> unbuttoned and his stomach was exposed. Uh, it was on though. And so we collect him. We're like, come on, let's go do whatever. So as we're walking to go do whatever we're going to do, there's all these paparazzi hitting us up. And there's a piano station to take pictures. So we get 
we get settled. Jordan's on the piano. Me and Chelsea are leaning over the piano, staring at him as he's playing. And that's our beautiful photo. It looks legit. It's, it's actually classic. a really, really good photo. I love it a lot. Especially with Jordan's I shirt open and his chest hair out. Because at some know. point they told him to close his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they always take those photos. And then the day they take the photos, they always have like, a spot on the ship that's called the photo gallery where they'll actually like print out the photos and you can actually go look at them, clearly purchase them for a ridiculous markup. And believe me, they will watch you to make sure that you don't take photos of the photos. You but snuck Kim, fly I know, I know, but Kim, <laughs> you snuck those I got a out. a picture real of quick. every single one of my pictures. I know. I guess yeah. Brittany and I are the good people and we, uh, contribute to the economy and buy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the cruises are so cheap anyways, you know, so they're just trying to make a buck. Cause I remember one day when we had a port stop, I forgot where it was, but it was in Mexico. It was raining really, 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 really hard. So they were charging everyone $5 for ponchos, but they don't take cash. They charge it to the room. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Speaking of port stops, there are a ton of things to do off board the ship when you're at port including excursions. And there are so many activities for every single fitness level. Sometimes there's snorkeling, zip lining, river floating, bicycle riding. If you're into garden walking, sometimes they are. Garden walking? Yeah, I mean, for people with that are Old unable, age people. Like really fancy gardens? Yeah, like yeah, fancy yeah. gardens. Okay. Like when we were in okay. Victoria, Canada, there's famous gardens oh, there. Yeah, yeah. So you can walk through the gardens. So not all of them require a lot of physical activity. What are some excursions you guys have done? Everything except the garden walking that Brittany <laughs> had mentioned right there. I mean, we did snor- we've did we done snorkeling. I mean, a lot of cruises, you know, tropical places, but clearly we've done the Alaska one, which include Alaska, Canada. It's not tropical and you're definitely not getting in the water. So we didn't do that there. But I mean, we did zip lining in Honduras once. Uh, we did river floating in Belize, which was fun. With Zena. Can I just say real quickly though, for the zip lining, I was terrified shitless. And at some point they even us had us <laughs> zip lining. I know, right? I did it though. I didn't, I didn't complain or anything, but they had a zip line upside down. So I did that with our tour guide. But I remember at the beginning, I was sweating so bad. I was so scared. And the guys there are saying, we're going to take good care of you. We're going to take good care of you. And I look at Jamal and I'm like, oh my God, did you hear that? They're going to take care of us. They're going to take care of us. <laughs> I didn't think they were going to do otherwise. <laughs> I mean, so I didn't scared. really know. There's no way I would do upside down zip lining. I think I actually did it first out of our group because... You were the only one to volunteer. Yeah. They offered, did anyone want to go upside down? And no one else volunteered. And I'm like, all right, sweet. Pick me. Pick I, me. I was going to volunteer. Your hand just went up faster. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but like once you go once, you're fine. And I think there were like 13 lines. And so when they asked for a volunteer and Brittany, like her hand shot up so fast and I was like, shit, I missed my opportunity. So by the time we got to the next line, they said, anyone want to do it who didn't? That's when I volunteered. So I was immediately next. I think Jamal's the one who didn't do it. I didn't do it because this was a different type of zip line where, you know, so I don't know if anyone who's listening, I'm sure a lot of our listeners have probably zip lined before, but there's definitely like two types. There's the one where you'll stop kind of automatically and you don't really have to do anything with your hands. And then there's zip lining where you literally have to be your own brake system and you have gloves. And this was the type of one that we actually did where you had to break yourself on the oh wire God. with your own gloves. So if you <laughs> wanted to do upside down zip lining, you had to go with the tour guide. And our tour guide was a male and you had to be kind of like bundled up. Uh-huh. And I just, it just because of that, like it just really, it, wasn't my time. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I had to do the <laughs> upside down zip lining. Yeah, because you know what? It, when you look at the pictures, they're pretty sexual looking. <laughs> yeah, Brittany has a pretty <laughs> sexual looking one. It's on Brittany's Insta. You're upside, like basically his face is in your crotch because you're like oh. hanging so far down. Yeah. Have you ever been zip lining, Kim? No. You're missing I'm out. Not a big heights or speed thing. Do you remember me at Tron, Shanghai Disney? <laughs> <laughs> the, um, there's one line where it was so fast that you don't even get a chance to break yourself. So in order to break you, they have a, bl- it's not a block, like a brick or anything, but it, it's like a wood block and they throw it. It's, it's attached to the line and they throw it at you through the line, right? So basically it's shooting down the line and when it hits the the cord that's keeps you hanging 
from your the, wheels kind of yeah, yeah it breaks you but you're coming at such a fast speed down so when they throw that block at you to break you it just freaks you out because it looks like something's coming at you yeah and then Sounds i mean one, one of the other ones that we did <laughs> Brittany and i have done was actually bicycle riding this one was in alaska this one was pretty cool when we were in skagway alaska they took us in a van up the Klondike Highway, literally to the border of Canada. We didn't cross into Canada, but we literally went to the border of Canada. And then this highway that flows, you know, or travels from Alaska into Canada called the Klondike Highway, it's all on a hill. So we literally rode 16 miles downhill from the border of Canada, like back down into civilization. And I mean, you got to see obviously all the- Waterfalls. Waterfalls, the lush forest. There were some bears along the trail, things of that. Did you guys see bears? Yeah, well, they said we could see bears. We didn't. I'm telling our listeners, if you go do it, you might go see the bears. We didn't unfortunately see the bears. But I know Brittany had something that she loved, loved, loved when we went on a shore excursion one time. So by far, my favorite shore excursion ever has to be the glacier trekking. So when we were in Alaska, we were in our port was Juneau. And we booked a helicopter tour to land on the Mendenhall Glacier. Better or worse than the Kauai helicopter? Better. Better. <laughs> because it was just like a straight shot flying It was over. a 16-minute flight just nice. to the glacier. To the glacier. It landed on the glacier. And we got to put on crampons and got to trek the glacier, the Mendenhall Glacier in Alaska. And this is actually where we got engaged Along the track, Jamal dropped one knee and asked me Aww. if I would like to be his wife. And we, I said yes, of course. So we did get engaged on this shore excursion on the Alaska cruise. Aww. Yeah, I remember when, before, or when you guys left, my boyfriend at the time said, I know they're going to get engaged. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was, like, waiting for the pictures. And he finally posted them. Yeah, because I, like, to- I had told him. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. And, like, everyone knew except for I didn't know. Brittany it was a complete surprise. That, that I was going to go ahead and do it. So Your hand looked like it knew. She had a perfect uh, manicured hand. Well, and then I- with the ring on it, <laughs> post on Instagram. Before our vacation, I told her to go out and get a mani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he okay. was like, treat yourself, babe. Yeah. He was, <laughs> I had just finished a semester of nursing school. I was out for summer break and he was like babe go get done you know get your hair done get your nails done let's go on this vacation and enjoy it so i did and who knew he had a different motive behind it yeah because i remember when i saw the picture on instagram i was with um, a boyfriend at the time and he's like she looks like she knew look at that hand <laughs> i made sure she had the mani for that oh, one. but they yeah Jamal. <laughs> but yeah so at the excursions like when you're at port the cruise lines have stuff that you can actually go ahead and choose to do through guided tours through them. But beyond that, there are certain things that you can do if you don't want to do a guided tour through them to pay. You can explore on your own, which is some stuff that Brittany and I have done. I know Kim did that when she was at shore as well. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that Brittany and I did, instead of paying for a specific guided tour, one time when we were on the island of St. Martin, We went specifically to their beach called Maho Beach, which literally is at the tail end of like an airport. So you can watch the planes come in and the planes are literally 15, 20 feet above you as they land. You can hold the fence to ride the jet blasts as they take off, which I did. Yeah, I did. So, I mean, even though with the cruises, there are the shore excursions that you can book through the cruise line itself. I mean, just do your research. There's always stuff you could do at port without having to pay that extra money and just do things on your own. Yeah, and you really don't have to do your research either. Me and Chelsea, we didn't get any of the excursions. And in Puerto Vallarta, we got off the boat and they have arranged taxis right there. So your transportation, you can figure it out right there. And then we went and found good tacos. We found some of the best margaritas ever where the guy would just pour tequila straight in your glass until you told him to stop. Mm, I love this in Cabo, Love it. And then in Cabo, we're just like riding boats and went to a little beach bar. So yeah, you're taken care of. 
Kim, you missed out on the river floating in Belize, and I'm going to tell you why. I heard it so, was insane. Yeah, was. <laughs> there was no current at all, so you pretty much had to swim down the river. But um, you had to put all of your clothes in the locker, and then you get on the bus in only your bathing suit, because from there you're going to be going into the water. So Kim or Brittany and I both have bikinis, and you know... It's not like we're showing everything, but you know, it's it's a tiny little swimsuit. Well exposed. Yeah. So we get on the bus. We're practically the last two on the bus, and everyone stops and stares at us. It was the most awkward walk onto the bus because it's all <laughs> oh older people in like one pieces, and there we are with like our sexy bikinis. <laughs> And Brittany and I are like, oh my goodness, it was so uncomfortable. And then my favorite part about the river floating was, this isn't the favorite part, but there's a lot of iguanas, which they call bamboo chicken. Yeah, because they, they eat it like chicken <laughs> over there, I believe. And while we were going down the river, there was a an iguana who fell from the tree and landed so hard in the water, and it nearly missed us like we were like feet away from it but anyways our tour guide was telling us how jealous male iguanas get against other male iguanas going after females so at the end they needed to tie us up all together because we were running late so they tied up Brittany and then they tied up someone to Brittany so they missed tying Jamal to Brittany and so the tour guide apologized to Jamal that he wasn't able to be with Brittany and Jamal said that's okay I don't care just joking around and the tour guy said good job Jamal don't be like the iguana (laughs) (laughs) and I just love that (laughs) And so one last thing I just want to say kind of before we move on is we're talking about the stuff that we can actually do when we're at port, you know, on the cruises. But again, depends on your cruise line, look into it. But a lot of the ships try to encourage you, like if you're not going to get out on port, those are the days that most cruise lines will offer like substantial discounts. If you want to get a mani, if you want to get a petty, if you want to get a massage and use the spa, the days that you're at port, obviously majority of people are off the ship. So that's when they give a lot of their discounts for activities on board. So if you're just going on a cruise and don't really care where you're going and you're actually using the cruise as your vacation itself, definitely use that opportunity to look at, to see what they have on board for discounts and get, you know, a massage half off. Why not? Hell yeah. All right, guys, my favorite part of the episode, questions. (laughs) Why do you love questions so much? I I just love them because I love hearing from our listeners Mm -hmm. and what they want to know. And I love being helpful. And so If you have any questions, please, please send them in. Make my day. You can comment or DM us on Instagram at Travel Squad Podcast, and we will answer them in an episode, or we'll just comment back to you on Instagram. So one of our viewers asked us, and this is a really good question, it's how do you access the internet when you're on a cruise? You can't. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. (laughs) Well, you can, but you have to pay for the internet packages, which are very expensive. Expensive. Mine wasn't too expensive. I bought it because I'm that girl, and it was. I think it was fifteen bucks or a day. A day? No, no, the whole the whole time. What? Really? That's it? Yeah. That's oh, cheap. Wow. Because Nejwa, our, uh, Jamal, and I have an older sister who was on the the family cruise with us, and she said that she paid like twenty dollars an hour, and I think she only oh used God. it like twice. Yeah, it might have been thirty for the whole trip. It was either fifteen or thirty, but it was the whole trip. Well, that was a deal. Yeah. I don't know if they were given the special or what, because Carla usually, uh, may, probably, <laughs> maybe, I don't know, because a lot of cruise lines, they charge like either you could buy an internet package or you can kind of buy it by the hour, which is at a ridiculous rate. But even beyond that, you're at sea. So they even have as the disclaimer when you're about to purchase it, like we can't even guarantee oh like internet God. connectivity or like slow. speed or anything like that. So the videos will not load. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends on where you go, but Brittany and I ourselves are fortunate enough that our phone service that we do have offers us data when we're in Mexico and Canada. And if you're in the Caribbean, yes, there's some American islands, but for the most part, I mean, if you're buying that package, you're kind of really out of luck unless you're trying to spend a lot of money. But hey, it's a vacation. And if you're not really trying to work, like you don't need the internet. You could save your Insta posts until you get back. (laughs) Or when you get to port and you go to a restaurant and they have Wi-Fi. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Next question. 
What is a mustard drill? I don't even know this. <laughs> well, but I think you, it's very important to note. Jamal, I think you're going to describe this one the best. I'm Probably so, but Kim says she doesn't know it, but I guarantee you she didn't leave the port without doing it. <laughs> is that that thing they do in the beginning? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, I mean, a lot of people ask, you know, kind of like about safety. I mean... Not that we've heard recently of any ships sinking, but we all know the tale of the Titanic. (laughs) So based off of that, you know, obviously there is some sort of safety that goes into play when you get on the ship. So your first day on board, literally within the first hour, two hours after you sail, they have what's called the mustard drill, which is basically their emergency drill that they have in place. And so... God forbid something were to happen and you need to evacuate to the lifeboats. It's just a 10 to 15 minute drill where you go meet in what's called your mustard station where you meet and from there that's your kind of group of people on what lifeboat that you're actually going to be getting on. So it's basically if you want to equate it to when you fly and they always give you your pre-fly safety instructions, this is basically your version of it when you're on a cruise ship. But they make it interactive. You got to (laughs) go. That's for sure. They make it mandatory. They will come and knock on your room if you haven't left your room to do it. And they have a checklist of names for every station. Yeah, to make sure that you went. Yeah. Well, there was a question directed specifically towards me, I feel. And that is, do you ever get seasick? And how do you prevent seasickness? So I am the person in our travel squad that has the most motion sickness issues, I would feel. Right, guys? I would agree. I would agree. (laughs) So when I go cruising, I wear C-bands, and they're bands that you wear on both wrists on a pressure point that helps prevent seasickness, but you can also use the scopolamine patches, Dramamine, and the newer and bigger your ship is, the less you'll feel it. So I, I always take these things off, like when I'm in the shower and whatnot, and I don't usually take the actual medications. I try to use like home remedies before I use medications. But one thing to note is at some ports, your boat might not be able to dock to the actual island or station. And so it's called tendering when they have to bring a smaller boat to your boat and take you from the boat to the island that you're going to. And that boat, you can really feel the rocking and the motion of. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely prepare, especially for that short excursion. Yeah, I'm definitely fortunate that I don't get motion sick. So when I see you, you don't really battle through it because you do have your bands and take the precautions, but you'll always see people with the patches behind their ear. But one thing is if you definitely do get motion sick, the good news is on the big ships, you definitely can feel this way, but it's just not as much as if you were obviously on a smaller boat. But one thing to take into consideration just as well is if you can, when you're booking your stateroom, try to get it in the middle section and lower section of the ship because it has the least amount of sway to make you feel motion sick. That's right. If you're feeling sick, do not go to the top of the boat. Go directly to the bottom of the boat. <laughs> <That's> what, <laughs> you won't feel it down there. But, you know, I don't get seasick. But that being said, after we got off of the cruise, there it lasts for a few days of just feeling the motion of the waves. So, like I said, I didn't get seasick, but you're like, whoa, I still feel it. Another thing, too, if you've never been on a cruise ship before, you just can't even understand the amount of service and attention to detail that they actually provide to you. So one of our listeners also asked, is it customary for you to actually tip? And the answer would be yes, but not in the way you think. So with tipping, you don't need to add on a tip to your bills normally. You don't have to leave it in your room for the housekeeper. The cruise puts together a certain amount per day that they think is fair, that they divvy up amongst the whole crew. And so at the end of your trip, you'll usually have a bill for a certain amount. They let you know about this at the beginning of the cruise, so you are expecting it, but you are expected to pay it. I've actually heard of some people going up there and asking it to be removed, and they do get it removed, but don't do that unless you actually have been tipping the whole time. Because like Jamal said, 
they really do care about your experience and are doing a good job. When we say crew and who gets the tip, it's the housekeepers that clean your room every single day. And they don't just clean your room once, they clean it in the morning. And then when you're at dinner, they also turn down your room for the nighttime. So they'll make your bed again. If you took don't a daytime forget about nap. those animals. They make the little animal <laughs> creatures. We're talking about the waiters, the servers, the bartenders. The person at the help desk who answers your questions. Yeah. So or there's the a- person who helps you hook up your Wi-Fi every time you go because it's really slow and not working. (laughs) And if you're, you know, if you're doing extra things like going to the bar and using room service, you should tip those people individually because they're doing an extra service for you in that moment. Yeah. You know, when we were on the cruise, my parents tipped the gentleman who cleaned our room twice a day. And they did, you know, my parents are really social people. So my dad was talking to him and he said that one, you know, when you're the house cleaning crew, they don't get to get off at the port like the other people. And they really aren't getting tips the way that other people are. So my parents gave them cash every single day. So yes, it's included at the end, but if someone's going above and beyond or just making your life easier, it's always nice to give cash to them as a tip. The other thing is these boats are usually registered in the Caribbean, right? So instead of having to pay them minimum wage, American- U.S. um, minimum wage. U.S. minimum wage, they will register their boat in the Bahamas. And then that way they pay workers the minimum wage required for the Bahamas. So they're not really making that much money and they do rely on tips because the boats are not paying them as much. To touch on a couple things about that, I know Zaina had mentioned like when we went on our family one, my parents gave some of the servers or stateroom attendants cash tips, but the cruises are a cashless system. They charge everything to your room. So when we say that the cruise lines have a preset amount per day that they charge you for gratuities for kind of all staff, they charge that to your stateroom. Depending on the cruise line that you go on, it obviously ranges, but what they charge you depends on your stateroom category. Is it interior? Is it a balcony? Is it a suite? And based on that, that's the per day amount that they charge. Usually, let's just say as a base, it's $15 per day. So to touch back on on what Kim was saying, you know, if you don't feel $15 a day is appropriate, you can go to guest service and say, no, no, just please make it $10 a day. But if you want to go above and beyond, believe me, they do work harder than you actually can believe until you've experienced it. So that $15 a day truly is worth it. But you can definitely add more if you want to to it. So is there anything that you can't do on a cruise, guys? Yeah, this is our last question and a great question because we've told you about everything you can do. There's so much to do, but there is one thing you definitely cannot do. So I mentioned my friend Jordan earlier, who we found in the casino, sweaty and drunk, shirt off. And (laughs) just as a little preview, a little teaser, he will be our very first podcast guest. We're going to have him on the Cuba episode. So the one thing you cannot do on the cruise, we found out the hard way. Well, Jordan found out the hard way. (laughs) So same night we found him. We took all of our pictures. We were moving about the casino. Because of the state he was in, he thought it was a great idea to high five every single person he was walking by. And it was funny for the first hundred people. (laughs) (laughs) We've all been there. If you're drunk, it'll probably be funny for the next hundred people too. (laughs) So he, he thought it was hilarious. But at a certain point, you know, people were like, getting annoyed by it and there'd be someone that was into it and then the next person would be like don't fucking touch me you creepy sweaty man put your shirt on (laughs) Um, but I guess at one point it was just too much and one or multiple people complained about it and so security came and found him wasn't hard loud guy high-fiving everyone picked him out right away without a shirt (laughs) (laughs) and me and Chelsea, I, I don't know where we were. We're in a comedy show. That's where we were. And Jordan disappears, and we don't see him for the rest of the comedy show. And we're like, all right, whatever. He's just moving about, doing his thing. And so then we move to the nightclub. And this is about an hour or two later. He comes back, and he's like, I was just in boat jail. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, what the hell are you talking about? He's like, I'm being followed. They're following me now. And we look over and security literally is following him. It's like secret service on the side of the room. Always has an eye on him. <laughs> 
And apparently what they did is they took him to his room, escorted him to his room, and they had a balcony room. So they drilled the balcony door shut so he couldn't go outside, left him in his room and stood outside of his door, put him on timeout for an hour because he was he couldn't keep his hands to himself. And then they finally let him out and he agreed to be good. And they, <laughs> they said so they were going to follow him around for the rest of the night. And they also shut off his drink card. So he could, even though he had the drink package, he could not order any more drinks. Ooh. That night? Yes, that night. We had to buy him his drinks, which, of course, we kept buying them. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day, his drink card was still shut off. And he had to go to security and write a letter that said, I will keep my hands to myself. And they finally <laughs> turned it back on. <laughs> and not high five other individuals. So that's pretty much the only thing you can't do on a cruise. Compose yourself. Do not let the alcohol take too much of a hold, huh? That's the lesson <laughs> of the story. And maybe keep your shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, but no, all, all in all, cruises, I can't say enough about them. I love cruises a lot. And I hope we've inspired you guys to take cruises just as well. Any final thoughts about cruising before we say goodbye to our listeners? If you can go to the gym and run on the treadmill, you should. It's a really trippy experience. Not with alcohol, though. Okay, I'll try that in my next one. <laughs> <laughs> Just book your vacation and go on a cruise. You won't regret it. Sometimes if you book your next cruise while you're on a cruise, they'll give you a discount for your next one. Jamal and I did that. Pro tip, Pro tip. right there. Done that several times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And if you do want to book a cruise, why don't you book a Caribbean cruise leaving November 9th from Miami and join me. Woo -woo. We can hang out. <laughs> but if not, maybe next time. So thank you guys so much for listening. We know that you enjoyed this episode and we hope that you will enjoy sailing the high seas when you go on your next trip. Please subscribe to our podcast, leave a review, and tune in every Travel Tuesday for new episodes. And if you aren't already, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Travel Squad Podcast. Like we earlier mentioned, next week we have a special guest joining us, Jordan. So pack your bags, grab your passports, because next week we are going to Cuba. 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 Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.